This is Brother, Beyond the Craft, with Neil Thomas Allen and Taz Bachu. Hello and welcome to Brother, Beyond the Craft. This is um, the third episode in our series about the progressive orders um, outside of the craft. Uh, my name is Neil Thomas Allen, and I am delighted, as always, to be joined by my fellow co-host, uh, Taz Bachu. Taz, how are you, mate? I'm very well, thank you, Neil Thomas Allen. How are you? I am delighted. We're sat in the garden again. Hopefully, we'll get a bit of bird song um, to make the next uh, <laughs> our next uh, member of staff's job incredibly difficult. Um, and that is our delightful moustached producer, Josh. How are you, my friend? I'm very well, thank you. Yeah, very well indeed. I am keeping up the tash for the time being. Um, I've invested an unholy amount of money recently in, I found my, my grandfather's old safety razor. So I've gone online and bought a load of um, brand new razor blades. I've bought the soap dishy thing and a new brush and the whole shebang. I'm brush. going all out. Fantastic. Well, that sounds excellent. Good, good. You, um, please... you missed a bit here though, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he looks very dashing, like an RAF pilot. And of course, the eight foot tall video producer from uh, Parts Unknown, <laughs> Jack Saunders. Jack, how the devil are you, my friend? Really good, thanks. I had a week of annual leave last week, which was nice. Got to enjoy the sunshine, do a few jobs. Um, Essex Cornerstone had a video social on Zoom this weekend with our potential grandmaster, which went really well as well. Really informative, really fun. So it's had a nice week. Fantastic stuff. Well, good. I'm glad you all of you are well. Um, Jack, I can see you're on the grape juice already. So I think I think we need to get into it, don't you, chaps? I do. I do. I do. Excellent. Well, this uh, this afternoon we're going to be deep diving into um, the Royal and Select Masters, also known as the Cryptic Degrees. Um, very quickly before I introduce our our guest uh, for this podcast, can I just have a quick show of hands who is in the Royal and Select? Is it just me? Oh, there you go. Took him a second. <laughs> okay, so that's 50% of us, which means the other 50% are absolutely gagging to be pitched to. Um, so we are we are joined this afternoon by the District Grand Director of Ceremonies for London, um uh rod uh bradley rod how the devil are you sir apprehensive but looking forward to it <laughs> excellent good 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 oh rod um first of all um i wondered if you could give us a bit of an introduction to yourself and how you got involved with freemasonry in particular and also the uh the royal and select masters okay uh, right, I'm in my late 60s. Uh, I live in Billericay in Essex. I moved here about 39 years ago. I was a late starter into Freemasonry. Uh, I was about 42, yeah, 42. Uh, and I met up with an old school friend I uh, hadn't seen for very many years. And uh, he invited me to a meeting at which I had to say, um, I'm not a member. Well, before I finished my drink, uh, the necessary form had come out and uh, arrangements had been made for me to uh, meet the, uh, in the examining committee, if you like. Uh, and three months later, I was initiated into craft. Um, since then, or my first venture beyond the craft, I suppose, was very similar to what I suspect it is with an awful lot of people, very much influenced by the senior people within my lodge. And in my case, it was the Royal Arch that I was um, encouraged to join. Um, since then, over the last mm, years, I've joined various other things. And I'm now a member of, what, uh, 14 different Masonic Orders, um, each of which I thoroughly enjoy. I've learned a lot from each and every one of them and um, one of the best things is I've gained an awful lot of really good friends. So 
so we want to know how you got um, involved in the Royal and Select Masters in particular. Ah, um, that's quite easy in a way, and it's it was a gap, a gap in knowledge that I wanted to try and understand and to fill. Uh, the first thing I joined, as I said, was uh, Royal Arch. Um, I joined a couple of other things before I joined the Mark. Um, and of course, you'll appreciate that there is a huge gap uh, between um, the loss of the word uh, in the third degree of craft and the discovery of the word in the, the exaltation ceremony of the of the Royal Arch. And uh, I learned through my research of other orders, etc., that this was covered in the cryptic degrees. Um, a very, very good friend of mine was uh, enthusiastic about Royal Select. So I spoke to him about it. Next thing I know, the form was signed and I was off to, um, to Harlow <laughs> three Fridays a year. A year. So, yeah, that's how I became involved in, in that. So my mother council uh, is in Essex in Harlow, but um, I also joined um, a council in London, and uh, it was through there that I gained district and then grand honours. It sounds like you've um, you found your, your equivalent friend of Neil who just waves forms and takes you out for beers and gets you into a number of different <laughs> kind of repentant orders. Um, Ron, well, I wanted to ask... I've lost an awful lot of friends like that. We're <laughs> <laughs> having too many forms that are waving in front of people. <laughs> they avoid me like the plague. It's a good Take way of to find the rounds. Heed that warning, Neil. Heed that warning. Um, Rod, I, I wanted to ask a little bit more. You mentioned um, that you found like the, the order bridged a gap. Would you be able to give us a, a bit of background around the order and, and, and the story behind the Royal Intellect? In the mid 18th century, American masonry uh, was operated by a number of provincial grant lodges and private craft lodges that derived their authority mainly from the ancient grand lodge of England. And naturally, and in accordance with the practice of, of the ancient Grand Lodge, a whole range of post-craft degrees were being worked in the craft lodges, including things like the Royal Arch, Mark, Knights Templar. Um, at that time, there was also a Grand Lodge held in Charleston in Virginia, which worked the 20 25 degrees of the right of perfection that included the cryptic degrees. Now, following the American War of Independence, the right of um, perfection fragmented, and the four cryptic degrees were worked as part of the York or American right, comprising a total of 10 degrees. Yeah, a total of 10 degrees. Um, when the state Ground Council of Royal and Select Masters was established in America. It controlled three of the four degrees, and the fourth, the degree of the most excellent master, was controlled by the American Grand Chapter. Uh, other degrees from the right of perfection, as a bit of a side note for you, if you like, found their way into England, um, and some became part of the ancient accepted right or rose choir and others found their way into the uh, into the order of allied masonic uh, degrees trust your members there as well no <laughs> so it, it, is that good enough for background i would say that's that's as comprehensive without um without going too much and spoiling it i think that was a perfect amount so Guys, if you want a bit more history about it, as Rod said, join and look inside the book. So, <laughs> well, on that well, point... Well, you can ask me, and I've got histories that uh, I deliver at, um, well, normally at Mark Lodges, actually. But, uh, there as, you as go. Thing. Talking about that's a perfect segue, right? So, I want to ask you, Rod, 
how do you qualify to join the Royal and Select Masters? Oh, that's easy. I like easy questions. You have to be a subscribing member of Craft, of Mark, and of Chapter. That's it. There you go. That was nice and easy. I'll tell you about the order and how it runs, what happens here, yeah? Uh, first of all, we don't have lodges or chapters, we have councils. Uh, councils form part of a district rather than a province. And as of last week, when I checked up with Mark Mason's Hall, uh, there are currently 236 councils across 27 districts, along with two inspectorates, and there are 17 unattached councils. They stretch from Hong Kong and Singapore in the Far East, uh, to Zimbabwe in South Africa, uh, Western Europe, Channel Islands, why they, why they I separate the Channel Islands, I don't know, but also the Caribbean. Um, the cryptic decrees are based upon various Jewish leg legends. One of them tells us that during the initial stages of the building of the temple, King Solomon was worried that heathen powers might attack them and steal the important temple treasures. Therefore, he ordered the construction of a secret vault, an underground stronghold, where the treasures could be hidden beneath the sanctum sanctorum of the temple. There was a secret passageway supported by nine arches. That's very important at later stages, nine arches, <laughs> uh, between the secret, sacred, between the secret, well, secret vault and the king's palace. Uh, there are four degrees yeah. and they must be taken in a strict order. And quite often, more than one is taken at a particular meeting. Uh, That's correct, because I, I, I was going to say, I, I, took, I took my third and fourth um, at, the same, at the same meeting. I remember yeah. there was a, uh, an, an aproning. Obviously, until you take all four, um, you can't wear the very peculiar, and I'm sure you'll get onto that, um, apron. Um, so oh, after they did the fourth one, <laughs> it is a wonderful little apron. Um, yeah. But I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure Jack wants to. Uh, I'm sure Jack has something he wants to ask. I yeah, can that's, see in <laughs> that's interesting, actually, Neil. I didn't realise that you could do more than one uh, one ceremony in the same same evening, which is different to other orders. But Rod, is there anything um, unique that you would say about Royal and Select Masters that is that is sort of different to the others, or what would you describe as its unique selling point really that for members that aren't members of Royal and Select would be interested in? Ah, um, I think what is different about it is uh, there are four degrees and they're effectively held in four totally different uh, room settings. Um, so that uh, between each one, everything is always opened up in the select master degree. I'll come. I'll go back to that in a minute. Um, and uh, the room is changed for the royal master. It's then changed again for the uh, most excellent master, and then again for the super excellent master. And one of the unique things about it is. Moving around the furniture, the rearranging the furniture in the room, etc., uh, is often quite hilarious. <laughs> um, in London, we've actually um, uh, a, a, a sort of a DC's guide, and uh, we, we, we've drawn up sort of instruction booklets of how to do it and who should do what, and you know, idiots' guides. Uh, perhaps I shouldn't say idiots guide, should I? Uh, <laughs> they're about to be published when we start the new season. But um, what's unique about it, it's one of those orders where the ceremonies readily divide themselves, you know, lend themselves, not divide themselves, lend themselves to being uh, shared out by different people so you can get a number of people participating. Um, in one of the degrees, everybody 
gets involved um, in having to move around and form a circle, form a square, form a triangle and all this sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's very inclusive. It's very flexible. It's very friendly. It's, it's, it's very laugh. Uh, I know this has been um, alluded to already. Neil has sort of touched on this. Would you explain to us a little bit more about the regalia, please? Yes. Right. When you are first, you, it's called being received into uh, as a select master. Um, at the end of that uh, ceremony, you're presented with a breast shawl. Um, it's extremely expensive and elaborate. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's at least 12 quid. Yeah. <laughs> then there is nothing else at all until you have taken your the fourth of your four degrees uh, where you get an apron and um, that is that's about 30 pounds um, beyond that uh, when you go through the chair it's called the thrice illustrious master in uh, in this order uh, always love that name <laughs> thrice illustrious yeah, it's a great name. Love that. Yeah, I'm not going to go into why it's called Thrice Illustrious. So nope. that's, 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 that's going to get a little bit too involved, I think, for, for the purpose of this. Yeah. Um, a bit like when you become Master of the Lodge, uh, there's a separate apron there with the uh, squares instead of the rosettes. Uh, there's a separate apron for for, for, the, for, the, for the Master. Um, that's that's a more expensive that's about 55 pounds um, a lot of councils nowadays um they actually have their own um council reigning masters apron uh, but that's not by not all by a long way but quite a lot do um and then obviously you'll wear that because it's the, the council's apron during your year in the chair, but when you come out, you'll have to buy a past master's apron and that's 55 pounds or thereabouts. On top of that, there's a tie, um, 20 quid, uh, cufflinks. Most districts have their own cufflinks. Uh, they're typically about, about a tenner. Um, certainly the Essex and London ones are a tenner. Um, do you, want, do you want beyond that if you get provincial and district honours and all that sort of thing? Oh, sorry, district and group? No, no. Oh, no. the basis. That's perfect. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, cut, <laughs> I'll cut in and ask you now. Um, so, Rod, I'm an Essex free, well, I'm an Essex boy as well. I'm in yeah. Thames, Thames Estuary Council out of South End. Yeah, um, okay. So, I've, I've taken my um, the third degree now in, in Royal and Select. The, um, most excellent master degree and for me what I've really enjoyed about Royal and Select is one of my favorites it's it's got a great mix between uh what Mark is being as the friendly and more sort of um uh oh what's it called like dramatic and sort of playful degree and chapter being the historic and and very dramatic as well and I for me I've found that Royal and Select combines both these elements really really well into uh, historically dramatic, fun-filled, and emotional experience. Couldn't agree with you more. Um, right at the very beginning, when you first uh, when you first come into uh, being a select master, uh, it's very dramatic. There, um, all of the lectures in all four degrees, I think they're extremely informative. Um, and in the Royal degree, uh, there is a piece of work there, um, which uh, is considered by very many experienced Masons as being one of the most beautiful pieces of work in the whole of Masonry. Where, I agree with that. Uh, I agree. Where, where, where Hiram Abiff is um, contemplating death. And uh, <coughs> yes, it's brilliant. And not only that, um, it's delivered by the principal conductor of the work, which is the equivalent of a junior warden in, in, in craft. 
and um, it's extremely satisfying to do that well. Extremely satisfying. Yeah. So, sorry, Rod, I, I, I completely cut you off. Go ahead. No, 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 no. you go ahead. I, I, I was about to ask, I've, you've, you've got me gripped. You have got me gripped. So I would like to know um, what you would consider you the... <laughs> it's not a blank in the paper. <laughs> you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure if, if Neil doesn't send one over on the email, um, Jack probably will. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to ask, um, mm -hmm. for, for those of us that aren't members, what would what would an ideal candidate look like you know you, you've kind of gone through the qualification of, of what you need to have to join but in in your experience and in your mind what's what's the ideal person for this for this order having joked about forms definitely not anybody that you can sway to sign a form <laughs> <laughs> definitely not <laughs> you know what the qualifications are uh, to those, I think I would add that an ideal candidate would already have shown a keen interest in the ritual and lessons of previous orders and probably performed them to quite a reasonable standard. Uh, I know we're not all ritualists and uh, in the Royal Islet there's certainly plenty of room for those who don't want to be sent to stage in, in the ceremonies. However, involvement does tend to enhance your enjoyment. So very importantly, I think one of the th things you must have is time. Councils generally don't have uh, an LMI. Uh, in London, we're lucky we have, we have a monthly uh, council of improvement for, for, the, for the district at Mark Mason's Hall. But um, it, it isn't like most lodges, well, well lodges have an LFI. Uh, you've got to sort of do it on your own, therefore you've got to be keen and, uh, and interested. Um, yeah, I think that's it. The, the, the time, the enthusiasm and the ability to work alone. And of course, there is one requirement that every Mason should have that very few seem to have, and that's the ability to read words in red italics. Yeah, <laughs> I was, I was going to say, this is, this is a key thing that I think I need to uh, sh sort of get better at in this, in this sort of lockdown is uh, read the red words. I think that's, that's that something the I've... slogan of the podcast. What, read the red words, yeah. <laughs> I think we should. Do the introduction in Red Italics. <laughs> exactly. Um, right. So, Rod, thank you so much for that uh, high level overview of the Royal and Select Masters. Um, we want to now deep dive um, and give you some questions from our Twitter followers. Um, we've got a few, um, and I think Jack has the first one. <laughs> Uh, so we've had a uh, question from the Grand Summers of the Scarlet Cord and friend of the podcast, Ian Curran. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's he's put a bit of a technical question to you as the oh. as the Grand uh, Director of he Ceremony. It was me that was doing this. He must have done because he's <laughs> he's laid a right one here for you. He goes, uh, where where do you think that the principal conductor of work perambulation in the Royal Master degree takes place? Because in the MEM lecture, it clearly states that the Ark was placed in the Holy of Holies after Hiram had been murdered. It's always puzzled me. So I think he's wondering where, where in time and space uh, this, the Royal Master degree takes place. Right. If you go back to craft, you're told that every day... When the, when the brethren are called from labor to refreshment, at midday, Harmabith went off to the, to the temple to pay his devotions to, to God. That is where the royal degree is centered. 
and so he's coming out of the holy of holies where he he's been praying to god and as he's about to leave he's stopped at the door by, 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 by a mason who uh, well adoniram you all know who adoniram is um and uh, asked when he will receive the master word um now the well, i've forgotten what the rest of the question was i'm sorry <laughs> no, i think that's great i think that covers that covers it okay but that i mean that in itself has convinced me uh that i'm very interested in rules and select now that that was Excellent. phenomenal um but we have now got another question yeah, I've no doubt I'll get an email from Ian tomorrow if that's not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> um, so our next question comes from Ledge Fletch, who is at Lodge Fletch. Um, he says he understands that Royal and Select joins the dots between other orders. So when in your Masonic path is the best time to join? And should you be a member of any other, other degrees first in order to receive the full benefit? Excellent question. Uh, I actually prepared quite a little bit in my own mind beforehand uh, to tell you a bit about the degrees uh, and how they connect things up. But as we alluded to earlier on, um, there's a 470 year gap between the word being lost with uh, Hiram's death and its discovery. Um, only the cryptic degrees covers that. So far as I'm aware. Do you need to be a member of anything else or would it help you? Um, I don't really think it would. Um, there are other orders that you could join in uh, sort of beyond the craft immediate, you know, um, that take you off in slightly different um, areas of study. But um, no, you don't. Being a member of something else wouldn't enhance or detract in any way from from the Royal and Select, in my opinion. I think for me, joining Royal and Select, it sort of brought together the the whole of the Hieramic legend and sort of finishes finishes it really that timeline, and that was one of my reasons for joining it. So I sort of. Yeah had the complete picture. For anybody that doesn't like having loose ends, it ties everything up. It, 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 yeah, it, it explains things, it makes things whole. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I, think that, I think that was spot on. Um, now it's time for our elevator pitch. So um, we have a leaderboard, which after this, after this episode goes out, we will be releasing an image of the current scores on the doors. Um, who is going to get a stopwatch up? Me. Who, who have we got? got it. Oh, look, there we go. Here is look, the go. as it stands. So, <laughs> have a look at the so, is that too? I can't see. So, we've got Red Cross of Constantine is at the top yeah, with yep, 30 uh, seconds, point one seven. Then we've got Order at the Secret Monitor with 45 seconds exactly. So uh, 30 seconds, point one seven is the time to beat. So the question is, Rod, as Grand District of London Provincial Director oh, that of was Motion, <laughs> were the ceremonies, are you ready? Yeah, go on, far away. Right, I'll count you in, you ready? Three, two, one, go. The cryptic degrees are the main steps in the allegory of the lost word. They take the candidate through the unexplained period between the loss of the word in the third degree of the craft and its discovery in the Royal Arch Exaltation Ceremony. To anyone who is inquisitive about this gap in his knowledge, the Royal and Select Masters provides the perfect solution. Not only that, it's different and you'll enjoy the company of like-minded masons. How's that? Excellent. Okay. Right. Well, we have an answer. We have a score. Ooh. Question. Ooh. Question. Ooh. Where do you think you've come? 
probably about 28 seconds it's a second well you did it in 30 God. six seconds 0.76 which puts 36? you in second place <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Go ahead and select master, second place I'm on the sure leaderboard. I'm trying to this slowly, thinking that... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that's a, that's a... Before the OSM. So that's, that's a strong silver medal. That yeah, is a strong silver much. medal so far. So, yeah, that was, that was expertly <laughs> done, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Rod, listen. I want to um, on 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 behalf of uh, on behalf of brother. Um, I just want to thank you for uh, for jumping on this afternoon um, and, and having a chit chat about the uh, the Royal and Select Masters with us. So, chaps, if you'd be so kind as to give the man a round of applause, that would be most excellent. <laughs> See what I did there? Most excellent. Well, guys, that about wraps it up for this episode of Brother. I want to thank you all for choosing to either watch or listen to us. Um, please feel free to tweet us your feedback on Twitter at Brother Masonic. And uh, we'd love to hear from you from, uh, from the website as well. So you can find a full archive of all of our episodes going all the way back to the very first with Client Wine, if you can remember that far back. Uh, and you can see uh, all of our YouTubes, which we've got up as well on our YouTube channel. You can find all the links and all the information at our website, brothermasonic.com. Uh, guys, thank you so much for your time. Until next time, when we'll have a different progressive order, we are brother, you are too. Thank you so much for listening. This is Brother. Beyond the Craft, with Neil Thomas Allen and Taz Bachu. This was a Brother production in association with Mark Mason's Hall, presented by Neil Thomas Allen and Taz Bachu, with Jack Saunders, produced by Joshua Worley. You can follow us on social media at Brother Masonic on Facebook and Twitter.